here's a stupid analogy, but like uh, eating salads. It's like, well, do you like eating salad or do you just like eating ranch dressing? But really at the end of the day, if you, if you don't have something in your life that is gonna give you a sense of purpose and a sense of contentment and fulfillment, you are going to look to artificially stimulate in the absence of life stimulation. Who's ready for a little bit of controversy? Hmm. All right. We're starting in three, two, one. Welcome back to Getting Sober. Dot, dot, dot. Again, my name is Jay, and today we're going to talk about uh, something that's a little bit controversial. But first, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to this channel. And at some point, consider leaving a comment for me or for our other viewers and uh, make some friends while you're down there. There's plenty of people that are on the same road to recovery and probably have uh, some things in common with you. So today um, we're going to talk about something that uh, has a little bit of controversy to it. You know, I know this is a, a channel on sobriety and, um, you know, we're, we're supposed to be working towards sobriety and sometimes we're doing, you know, for some of us, we're doing it again. <laughs> but, um, you know, I don't know of anybody that uh, that drank, got drunk or had like a, 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 a bout of drinking and then just decided, ah, I'm done, I'm good and just got better or <laughs> stopped or got sober, right? Um, immediately and on their first try. I don't know anybody like that. If you do, comment below. But um, so today the topic is, um, you know, do what works best for you. If you relate to that, comment below. <laughs> I know that there's a lot of people in here. You know, there's there's a lot of uh, psychology that kind of goes into a lot of what I say. And I know that I go off on like tangents and uh, I get sidetracked with, um, you know, psychology is, it's, it's important. You know, it's how, nobody really teaches us how to think. You know, you, you really just, you really just, you get the tools that you have from your parents and however big your family might be. And just because you have a big family doesn't mean that any of them are intelligent and doesn't mean that any of them are insightful or compassionate or, you know, loving or caring or uh, wise for that matter. And I'm not saying that I'm any of those things, but I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get that way. I'm trying to be that way. And, um, the first point I'll bring up is that I think that, you know, with regard to uh, drug and alcohol use, I think that personally um, I am a better person for it. I know it's a controversial statement. Hold on. <laughs> don't hit that delete button. Unsubscribe. Don't do it. <laughs> but, um, you know, what I mean by that is uh, it was experience, you know, it was life experience. And I'm glad that, you know, I've, I'm glad that I'm in this place. And uh, for however long that I am alive, I'm glad that, um, I, I get to choose every day to make better decisions instead of worse decisions. I get to choose every day, you know, what, I, what I'm going to do with my time. I was feeling particularly aimless today. Um, I kind of had a long, la uh, long night last night and um, I was up later than I, than I normally wanted to be. And, um, but today it's, you know, it's a sunny day. It's a Saturday. I've never made a video on a Saturday, but I felt, uh, you know, I was talking to myself in the shower like I normally do. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, uh, why don't I just take this energy and make another podcast? So I did. And here we are, you know, and, uh, you know, I think that a lot of times we get sidetracked with the anxiety of life and sidetracked with thinking about like how things could have been, um, thinking about like how, how things should be, which, you know, should is a strong word. It's interpretive, right? We don't, you know, what, what does should mean? Um, if you had to define some, if somebody asked you to define the word should, which I'll put it up on the screen, but if you had to define the word off the top of your head, you know, what would you even say? What, is, what does should mean? Right? Um, so when we get wrapped up and thinking about like how life should be or where we should be in life or, you know, like what, what we, what path, career path we should be on or what, you know, how many kids we should have at this point or you know where you know where do you live what education you got when you start start thinking about all that stuff it causes anxiety and depression it's not really healthy and then that starts to make us think about escapism right and when we start to think about like the overwhelming amount of work that it takes to catch up and comment below if you relate to this like if like the amount of anxiety that you feel from having guilt about having to catch up in life. All the books that maybe you should have read or the degree that you should have won. You should have gone back to school or you should have just stayed in school longer. You should have worked harder on that presentation to get that promotion at work. Or, you know, you should have taken the other interview more seriously or you should have talked to that person that you, you had a crush on. Or, you know, you could have been nicer to your current spouse, you know, your current partner. I mean, there's just so much. And again, we can, we can only really control 
what's in front of us. We can only control what's happening right now and moving forward. We can't control what happens in the past. But with enough better decision making, we can leave a lot of those negative decisions in the past. We get further and further removed from all of that negative momentum that I keep talking about. When we think about getting sober, we think like, well, if you just drank yesterday, and I bet that some of you are watching this, this channel today and watching this episode, maybe you went out last night and you know, like I went out last night, but you know, I wasn't drinking. And uh, I was watching my friend kind of slowly start to like disappear. <laughs> um, a lot of Irish goodbyes. And um, I even bought a drink for a friend. I hadn't seen him in a while and I bought a drink from him and then he Irish goodbye me. <laughs> Classic drunk move, right? I knew when he showed up, I was like, oh, I, I offered him a drink and then he started talking. I was like, ugh. I shouldn't have offered him a drink, <laughs> but I did. It's whatever. He probably won't even, he probably woke up today, doesn't even remember it, right? But, uh, you know, hopefully he had a, he had such a wonderful night that he doesn't even remember it this morning, right? You remember those days? Comment below. But, um, so, you know, doing what works best for you. And it's like, again, this is not a, a judgment channel. Um, I think that why some of you relate to this channel and relate to the messages that I, that I, I put forward is, you know, it's part of, uh, I feel like it's more advanced thinking and I, I would hope that the, the world ends up more along the lines of the way that I think, you know, I'm trying to build this community. I'm trying to find people like you that also agree with the things that I have to say. And, you know, I often, you know, I, you probably relate to like not relating to people growing up. But a lot of you, I think, feel like maybe a black sheep of the family, you know, um, Maybe you didn't take your career as seriously as you wanted to, or maybe you have some sort of uh, some sort of loss or you have endless amounts of self-sabotage that uh, kept you from whatever potential you and your friends and family believe that you have, right? So, you know, why I'm so forgiving is because, you know, I'm looking for forgiveness, right? I, I've, I would hate to think that anybody would look at me and try to define me off of a single mistake that I made in the past or even a handful of mistakes I, uh, in the past. I've done what I can to ask for forgiveness from the people that um, I feel like I deserve an apology to. And I've talked about that in previous episodes. Put the little link up there. Um, it's never too late to apologize, right? And um, so that's one way of potentially erasing. You can't really erase the history, but you can take a dark spot in your history, one that you wanna forget and maybe somebody else wants to forget. And maybe with some kind words, and maybe with showing people that you are you are willing to change, and you are you are going through a rehabilitation that is permanent, not just temporary for you know saving face, you could turn that very dark spot, that very erasable spot in your history, in your co-history with you and another person or other people, and maybe it'll just become an asterisk. You know, it's like the asterisk then becomes, and you see the notes below, and then the asterisk says. This person was on one this day, and uh, but since then they have shown no signs of repetitive behaviors, right? And that's what I hope to do moving forward. So I know that um, I've definitely made some terrible decisions <laughs> in the past. I've definitely hurt some people in the past. I definitely still owe some people some apologies, um, but I'll get there. Uh, it's it's not it's not going to leave my mind. Just like leaving, not just like. Sobriety is not leaving your mind. You know, that little voice that's inside of you is that's that little voice that's inside that little voice, wherever it comes from. If you want to call it God, if you want to call it the universe, for all we know, there's the panel of our, of the panel of our ancestors are all sitting at a round table, all just critiquing every choice. They're like, oh, hmm, donuts for breakfast again. I don't know about that. <laughs> Who knows what they're saying up there? But that little voice inside your head that tells you to make better decisions that are worse decisions, it's like, how about not bre how about not donuts for breakfast today? How about a smoothie? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I don't know, but the donuts are gonna go stale, and we already spent the money on the donuts, and the fruit's frozen, so we're just gonna nice try, Council of Ancestors. We're doing donuts this morning, <laughs> right? Um, but you know, so doing what what you know do do what works for you. You know what works best for you, and that's not you know I'm not giving anybody, um, not that it's my position to give anybody the hall pass um, or permission, right? Um, to do what, they, what they're gonna do or what they wanna do, but you know, don't lose focus of, um, of what your goals are. And I had um, a, a long time subscriber, shout out to Eddie, sent me an email yesterday and was telling me that uh, he 
was um, wanting to link up. Sorry for putting your business out there, but nobody, nobody knows who you are because <laughs> um, your screen name is different. But um, but he's talking about he's going to be linking up with his dad, and um, he had you know really hadn't, he hadn't seen his dad for a while. It was kind of the thing that they have a couple of drinks together, and he's done a really really good job of being you know this is I think he's been sober for I can't remember forgive forgive me for forgetting um, exactly, but he's been. He's got a little asterisk in there somewhere, but basically he's been sober for like four months or something like that. So, you know, hats off to Eddie. Congratulations. Um, and he was saying, you know, he's telling me it was on his mind. He was thinking about um, having a drink with his dad. He just he basically decided that that's what he was going to do. It sounded like he had a certain amount of transparency with friends and family, though. I don't know really that he told his dad that he was that he wasn't drinking. And it made me wonder, like, well, you know, the, in situations like that, we feel like that's it's very clearly peer pressure, right? And, um, you know, when I always thought, when I thought about like drinking with my dad, my, my dad drank a lot when I was a kid. And um, I always wondered, like, it was kind of taboo in our house because he had a drinking problem. And then for a good decade, he didn't drink. You know, my mom, him and my mom went to church a lot. And those were really, really good, healthy. They were healthier years in my childhood existence, for sure. As a healthier household, a lot less screaming, a lot less arguing. I don't think anybody went to jail <laughs> during that 10 years. But, um, you know, I was wondered like what it would be like eventually. Um, I thought I felt like it was taboo for me to, to drink or even think, think about like talk about like cigarettes or weed or whatever, you know, very Pentecostal Christian household, you know, all this, you know, being lukewarm and in, in, in the mouth of God and all that rejection, all that stuff and backsliding. And I was like, oh, there's a lot, there's a lot of Bible messages in my head. You know, I didn't exactly know what to do. But then, you know, in church, then they break the bread and have the wine and all that stuff. I'm like, there's some mixed signals here. <laughs> um, but, you know, with my, with my dad, I always wondered, like, what was it going to be like to have, like, I, I want to have a drink with my dad. You know, I, I always wondered what it would be like and would we have a great bonding experience? Would I finally be on his level? Would we laugh deeply and um, and passionately? Would you know? Would, would it be? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, I forgot. But anyway, you know, like, would it have extra meaning if I kind of stepped into his into his realm, into his house, into his comfort zone, and allowed him to be how he wanted to be? You know, and some people, regardless of you know how your best intentions of wanting to be sober, we still. Your, de your demons aren't going to disappear, right? And um, so like, for example, like with, uh, I'm big on like gut bacteria um, over the, especially over the past couple of years. Here's an interesting fact. For people who are depressed, they call a fecal, trans fecal transplants. For people who are depressed, they've done fecal transplants where they literally take the feces out of a happy person and they put it into a person who is depressed and the gut microbe and bacteria start to populate inside of the depressed person and the depressed person becomes happy. If you didn't know that was a possibility, it is. And it's one of many methods of um, battling depression and addiction and things like that. And it also works towards people with addictions and also works towards people that like were not addicts. In the case, some cases, uh, people that were not addicts did the fecal transplant of somebody who was an addict and then they ended up becoming an addict or they become like end up having strong cravings for sugar. You know, people that were obese also um, you take a skinny, depressed person, do the fecal transplant with a with an obese person, and then that bacteria from the obese person into the skinny person. The skinny person all of a sudden starts having it changes their cravings because that gut bacteria says, "I want this food. Give me the food that we want." And then these people ended up uh, it just it ended up gaining. There was even like I think a marathon runner, a uh, case of a marathon runner ended up like gaining mysteriously like 32 pounds after uh, doing this treatment. But um, so like I wonder what it would be like with my dad and, um, you know, going back to like the situation with like Eddie and his dad, um, I, you know, I wondered about the peer pressure. It was, you know, was it that the dad just wanted to to be himself? You know, was it you know, I don't know what the restrictions are in the dad's house. Like, does the, the wife not really let him drink too much or does he not have he's, he's just a really responsible guy and he only drinks on occasion. And this is just the one thing, you know, there's all kinds of cir circumstances. And I will say 100 percent, if you are listening right now and you wholeheartedly believe 100 percent that you have good balance in your life and you can do anything and everything in moderation, if you think that I don't mean go on, try drinking, if you think you have a drinking problems, see if you can just have a little bit and then see where it goes. That's not drink. If, if, if that's already your thought process, it's not time yet. Um, and it's not time for me yet. And I definitely, I don't know when it's gonna be time, but um, I'm not worried about it right now. I'm staying on my sober train, right? But uh, you know, I wonder, you know, what's uh, <clears throat> one of the podcast episodes I'm gonna come up with in the future is gonna be um, 
isn't, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't the activity be enough? Or is the activity alone enough? I think a lot of us, yeah, think about this, here's a stupid analogy, but like uh, eating salads. It's like, well, do you like eating salad or do you just like eating ranch dressing? <laughs> Comment below. Um, but you know, it's a lot of people's like, oh, yeah, I wanna get healthy. And then they just smother their, their, smother their salad with like a bunch of glug, 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 glug of salad dressing. And you know, not necessarily a lot of sodium, you know, whatever fat. And then the same thing with like drinking, drinking and activities. It's like, well, I became a, well, here's something that I could do so that I don't just look like an alcoholic. It's like, I'm gonna be drinking the whole time, but I'll also, I'll play pool or I'll throw darts or, uh, you know, do karaoke or we'll be at the beach and, uh, you know, we'll, whatever, we'll throw a frisbee around. So it's like, so it'll, it'll look like I'm doing other stuff than just like waiting to get to my next drink, which is it's like, that's kind of what we're doing, isn't it? We're just like waiting for the next drink to come around and it's waiting till we're getting, get done with this one. There's only two more left and there's three of us. I better hurry up and drink this one. You ever have that thought comment below? <clears throat> but we all do, we do the same thing with pizza too, right? <laughs> and uh, you know, that brings me to another point <clears throat> about um, addictive, having an addictive personality. There's, so there's studies out there. Somebody commented, I think it was uh, Paul or Frank. I can't remember uh, who specifically. I think it was, um, let me take a stab at it. I think it was Paul from Toledo um, was commenting about uh, having been diagnosed as a, having an addictive personality disorder, which some of, some people say some more, uh, some more resurfacing, uh, or more evidence, more evidence has been showing that that's not an actual diagnosis. So I'm not really sure what to believe on that. And there's so much, there's just so much misinformation, which is a whole nother topic. Like right now, whether or not, again, what, regardless of what your political belie beliefs are, um, red versus blue is an illusion in my opinion. It's really top class, it's war, it's, it's class warfare, it's top versus bottom. But again, this is not a political channel. That's just what I believe personally. Um, I think that we all, we're all a little bit conservative. We're all a little bit liberal. And um, see, I forgot what my point was. Now I started talking about it. I went a little too deep in that rabbit hole. But uh, um, so uh, Paul was having addictive personality disorder. And so I was saying misinformation, but we are under attack by different countries of uh, misinformation. It's just other countries' jobs to, put some information in front of us to make us all argue with each other with regards to like, you know, black lives matter versus all lives matter. And it's, it's a lot and it's a little, it's a little disgusting. We should all care about each other as my message as Americans, you know, we all live here. Let's make this world a better place and of political rant. But, um, you know, I've, I've always identified with feeling, I, I've always felt like I've had addictive personality disorder. And that, that's what I was kind of talking about yesterday with like this episode, with uh, episode 76, that you can be addicted to anything. The thumbnail shows me like I'm on a phone. A lot of us nowadays are addicted to our phones. How often are you pulling out your phone? Comment below, right? Um, I'll catch myself sometimes, especially when I'm playing pool, I'll go take my shots and I pull my phone out. Then I take my shots and I pull my phone out. And I'm just like stuck on this re repetitive uh, uh, behavior loop which also might be uh, a side effect of, you know, alcohol or drug use. But um, so he was talking about, uh, you know, having addictive personality disorder. And it's like, I've always kind of been like that. Like, I don't want just like a little bit of chips. I want the whole bag of chips. And, you know, like, I don't want just like a little bit of uh, sugar. I want a lot of sugar. You know, it's like, I, I'm, I'm obsessive like that. It's like, I don't want to just learn something. I want to learn all of something. I want to binge watch all of the tutorials. I want to binge watch a whole season, you know, something. And it's easy to become addicted to, to anything, to people, you know, you get a, a favorite new friend. You know, like when, I, when you were a kid, I'm sure you, you probably had like a best friend and then you had like another best friend or you had a favorite, favorite activity and that's all you wanted to do for months a brand new video game. That's all you wanted to do. You're just in your room on video games. Like when I got the internet in like the late night, like 99, I think we got the internet at our house. And um, that's all I wanted to do is be on the internet. I just wanted to be, I was on the internet. We only had dial up internet, one phone line. And um, I was just on the internet all day long. And like for 10, I would come home from school at three o'clock, 3.30, and I would be on the internet until like 10 o'clock at night. I am so, here, here's how old I am. I don't know if you, you'll either relate to this or you won't relate to this. This is how old I am. Um, we would chat online. There weren't any pictures. So the question was A slash S slash L slash, which stands for age, sex, location. And you would answer um, 17 slash male slash Ohio. 
And then, you know, and then most people didn't have the internet back then. So you'd be in a chat room and people would be from like North Carolina or, or like maybe somebody would be from, would be from Pittsburgh and be like, oh, it's kind of close. We're basically neighbors, <laughs> but um, that's not the point. But um, I was addicted to, to the internet. I spent an unhealthy amount of time on the internet and I still kind of do, not gonna lie. But so, uh, you know, do what works best for you. I think we're always trying to find, um, uh, we're always trying to find a formula that we can be happy and content with. But really at the end of the day, if you, if you don't have something in your life that is gonna give you a sense of purpose and a sense of contentment and fulfillment, you are going to look to artificially stimulate in the absence of life stimulation. And so what are you gonna do? Are you gonna continue to go back to slapping that easy button, doing another shot, doing another shot, doing another line, popping another pill just to exist, right? And a lot of people, you know, it's dealing with the guilt of, you know, what we should have done and the anxiety of how much we have still to do to get to where we want to be. And it's like, oh my God, it's so overwhelming. What am I going to do? I just forget about it. Let me just have a drink. Oh, no, I don't care. I'll just have, let me have 10 drinks. Now I just don't care. And now I'm just, I'm inebriated and I can't do anything now anyway. So, hey, I'm going to sleep, you know? And that's, I think that's a loop that we get stuck in for a long time. It's like just drinking ourselves silly until we just don't care anymore. Then we wake up the next day hungover and it's like, well, I, uh, my mission is to take care of myself because I feel like shit. So now I'm just going to coast through the first four hours of the day because uh, I'm just like, I don't even really feel good anyway. Like, what, what am I going to do? I don't feel good. I'm not going to go to the gym because I feel like shit. I'm not going to start that new business proposal because I mean, uh, my brain's not working. It's half partially fried, but you know, finding a better balance for you. And it's like, if, if you can find a better balance uh, in life, if you can have just a, a donut every now and then, if you can, uh, you know, spend just a little bit of time scrolling through social media, if you can have an occasional drink that doesn't turn into like extreme binge drinking throughout the night. That's what like, personally, that's what I'm afraid of. Like, I don't want a little bit of alcohol. I want all of the alcohol. I want a shot and a beer right now. And in 20 minutes from now, I want another shot and a beer. And then 20 minutes after that, I want another shot and a beer. And you might say, Jay, that is, a lot of alcohol that's like eight units of alcohol uh we're talking about and i say yeah i know uh i had a problem i started a channel about it called getting sober dot 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 again <laughs> but uh, you know i feel relatively unscathed i don't know what my insides look like but i know they don't feel the best i know some people have also been e uh, emailing me about um and you are included in my prayers. Anybody who's asked me to pray for them or whatever, um, I do have a list of people that I'm actively praying for. And, um, you know, so can, as you continue to support this channel, I appreciate all of your support. And, um, you know, speaking of support, also I also have my Venmo is now up. If you want to donate to this channel, like Getting Sober Again, and my Patreon page will be coming up uh, shortly. So you'll be able to, on a monthly basis, um, send in contributions like five bucks a month or whatever. So like I just tell people like the price of a, the price of your most expensive drink, <laughs> uh, and make that your monthly contribution, but we'll figure that out. I haven't done that yet, but, um, I'll, one of the last notes in this episode is getting a little, a little long, but, um, I'll, if you're not familiar with, um, Dr. Carl Hart, he is a, I think he's like a neuroscientist in, uh, at the university of Columbia, I believe. And I think he has a new, he has a new book out. And I think it's called drug use for adults, something like that. But so he doesn't drink. Right. And, um, he dabbles in pretty much all drugs and he's a professor at Columbia. And, um, he's even been quoted as saying as, you know, I, I enjoy a little heroin and I've never Die. It's, that's not something that's going to be on my to-do list, not on my bucket list. I mean, maybe on my bucket list. If I were if I were terminal, <laughs> I might be saying, you know, get me some heroin. <laughs> I'm going to give it a try. But, um, you know, it's neither here nor there, nor there. I don't mean to trigger anybody. But he has an interesting book. I would say, you know, I haven't read it yet, but like some of his philosophies on drug use is interesting. Um, when we talk about like drug use and alcohol use and people's environments, one of the interesting studies in mice, which I know mice, humans are not mice, but um, so they took uh, a, a mice, a mouse with no stimulation in a cage, in a tank. And um, so they just had basically had water there. And um, I don't know if it had like a wheel or whatever, but basically there was, there was no, there was nothing to stimulate it. And then, so what they did was they, uh, they added some cocaine to the water and or phenamine, I think it was cocaine. And then the mouse wouldn't stop drinking the water. It was just kept going back to the water, kept going back to the water. And then even gave it the choice of like regular water and cocaine water, still no other stimulation. Guess what it did? It chose to artificially stimulate in the absence of 
life stimulation. Well, then they, they took that same mouse and they put it in a general population of other mice where there were toys and wheels and all kinds of stuff. They, I'm sure they had, you know, whatever, uh, all kinds of little tubes and things that they could interact and have a good time, but be social again and, you know, be part of a community and a tribe and all that stuff. And then guess, uh, you know, they did the same thing with the cocaine, uh, cocaine water and the regular water. And guess which water they didn't drink? The cocaine water. They had community, they had stimulation. They had no reason to want to be artificially uh, stimulated because their lives were actually stimulated in a meaningful way. So depending on, you know, where you're at in your journey and what you're considering, you know, it's obviously if, whatever your goal, don't lose track of whatever your goal was. If your goal was to get sober, if your goal is clearly observing like, oh man, I just like, I had a conversation with a girl uh, the other day and she was like saying that she uh, like tried to kill herself. And, uh, and it was like really hard to hear that, like she tried to like drink herself to death and uh, like in her, still in her like twenties and like taking pills. And obviously that's not gonna be the road for you, you know, and she knows that, you know, we identify with like what, what methods are gonna work for us and what balance that we wanna find in our life. I think that you'll be in a much better place. And until you get there, until you get to your destination, until you get to the place that you wanna be, don't lose sight of what your goal is. Don't fall short of your goal. We're all struggling. And I know that we all don't have the same circumstances. I'm not trying to put myself in your shoes. And also you're not in mine. I don't have an extremely challenging life. I feel very, very fortunate. But I know that there are some people that are in much, much worse conditions, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, that sometimes the only thing they could do is just grab a, grab a sip of the tainted water. And that's what gets them through life, right? So be mindful on your journey, observe and be aware of what your pitfalls are and good luck to you on your journey. Please consider subscribing if you haven't and leaving a comment and I will see you in the next video.